Hello everyone, I am Dr. Furkan Gözükara. In this video, I will test the capabilities of ChatGPT, which is the newest release of OpenAI. I will ask tens of different style questions. I guarantee you will enjoy and get very surprised by the answers of ChatGPT. Currently, it is free to test with a free OpenAI account. I will add all of the questions as video chapters into the description, so you can quickly jump and see the questions that are interesting to you. Also, I will explain what is ChatGPT in details in the later part of the video. Let's quickly start asking questions and testing its capabilities. Okay, here comes the first question. Okay, the question we have asked is, Write me a complete software in C Sharp that will read the data from Excel XLSX files into data table objects. The answer is sure. Here is a complete C Sharp program that reads the data from an Excel XLSX file and stores it in a data table object. When we analyze the software, it gives a path. It uses OLEDB connection. And let's see. So it uses Microsoft OLEDB file path connection open data table OLEDB adapter. Okay, so let's also try uh, with another uh, version answer. Okay, it uses it again uh, OLEDB adapter. Perhaps we can ask in a different way uh, to get a better answer. Write me a complex software in C Sharp that will read data from Excel files into data table objects by using NuGet packages. All right, this time it has used Excel Data Reader library. So you can get uh, different types of answers, but it works. So let's move to our uh, next question. So our next question is compose a ballad about a Zio auditorium from Assassin's Creed. Let's read the answer. In the streets of Renaissance Italy, lived a man named Ezio Auditor, a skilled assassin and master of blades, feared and respected by one and all. He hailed from a noble family, but fate had other plans for him, as his father and brothers were killed, leaving Ezio to seek revenge. With a thirst for justice and truth, Ezio trained himself to be the best, mastering the art of assassination, and wielding his hidden blade with finesse. Okay, so, uh, let's move to our... Next question, which is a paragraph completion uh, question that is usually asked in English exams. Okay, um, let's read the question. Which answer is correct to complete the following paragraph and why? The degree to which children feel more self-confident as they grow older depends mainly on their relation with their mothers and fathers. Children always need to be reassured by their parents. Underscore, 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 underscore. This kind of trust is essential in reducing young children's anxiety. Uh, they need to believe that their parents will love them no matter what they do be. Anxieties are common even in the early years of childhood. See, they may begin to cry if one of the parents goes away even for a short while. D, any suggestion of forcing children to overcome a fear will only make it last longer. E, so parents should scold their children whenever they want. Okay, so it has given us a detailed answer. Let's read it. Uh, they need to believe that their parents will love them no matter what they do is the correct answer to complete the paragraph. This statement is supported by the previous sentence stating that children need to be reassured by their parents and the subsequent sentence discussing the importance of trust in reducing anxiety. The other options do not directly relate to the topic of the paragraph and do not support the idea of a positive relationship between parents and children reducing anxiety. Okay, as you can see, uh, the open GPT, uh, the chat GPT is providing us a very detailed answer as well. Okay, uh, so let's ask another type of question. 
List to me some of the best PC games that are both fun to play and that will improve my English level. Okay, when we analyze the games, The Sims 4, it's a simulation game which has a lot of text and that will surely improve your English. Bioshock Infinite could improve your English with a quest. Fallout 4 will surely improve your English or the, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. As you can see, you can get ideas as well. So let's ask another type of question. How Diablo 3 Immortal exploits people's weaknesses with its box opening system? Okay, here we have uh, an interesting answer. Diablo 3's Immortal box opening system exploits people's weakness for gambling and the thrill of potential rewards. The system allows players to use in-game currency or real money to purchase boxes that contain random, potentially valuable items. This creates a sense of excitement and anticipation as players open the boxes, but the chances of receiving a valuable item are often low. This can lead to players spending more and more money or in-game currency in an attempt to get the desired reward, ultimately leading to potential financial loss. The system preys on people's desire for instant gratification and the allure of potential rewards, ultimately exploiting their weakness for gambling. All right. So, let's ask another uh, grammar test in English. In this one, uh, the answer of the uh, chat GPT is incorrect, actually. Uh, the answer is uh, whose daughter. However, uh, chat GPT thinks that it is whom. So, we can't totally trust the answers of chat GPT, but uh, it is really good in some of the cases. For example, let's ask this question. In this one, it answers it correctly. Let's read it. Which answer is correct to complete the following paragraph and why? Rich people are, they never seem satisfied with their lot and are always anxious to make more money. Ah, uh, no matter how forward slash still be, Although forward slash some C, so much forward slash so much D, many forward slash much E, whoever forward slash that. Okay, so the answer it gives us. Ah, uh, no matter how forward slash still is the correct answer to complete the paragraph. This phrase accurately completes the sentence by stating that rich people are never satisfied with their wealth and are always seeking to make more money. The other options do not make grammatically correct sentences or do not accurately describe the behavior of rich people. Okay, and the answer is correct. So let's ask another um, com complex uh, question in programming. How to compose a periodic background task in ASP.NET Core? Explain with details and code examples. By the way, in Chrome, uh, this output is working better. Uh, however, in Internet Explorer, it has some problems. It is not fully complete. Okay, so it has provided us a detailed answer. To create a periodic background task in ASP.NET Core, you can use the iHasted service interface and the background service class. First, you need to create a new class that implements the iHasted service interface. This class will contain the logic for your background task, such as sending emails or performing database maintenance. Here is an example of a simple background task that prints a message to the console every five seconds. Okay, and you can read the answer. You can try it if it is working or not. It also explains other parts. Next, you need to register your background task with the dependency injection, DI, container in the configure services method of your startup class. You can do this by calling the add hosted service method. Okay, and... Finally, you need to ensure that your application has a long-running host. By default, ASP.NET Core web applications run in a short-lived host that is terminated after a request has been processed. You can change this behavior by calling the Eustace integration or use Kestrel methods in the configure method of your startup class. Okay, this may not be fully complete, but it will give you a lot of idea to where to look and do. So, let's also ask some hard lead code programming questions that are frequently asked in interviews. Okay, I have opened the lead code problems section. So from here, let's ask um, a hard question, which is uh, categorized as hard, median of two sorted arrays. 
Uh, so the full question I am going to copy and paste it. Okay, given the two sorted arrays num1 and num2 of size m n respectively, return the median of the two sorted arrays. The overall runtime complexity should be o log m plus n. So it is providing us an answer with code and the description. To find the median of two sorted arrays in O, log, M and N, time complexity, you can use a modified binary search algorithm. First, you need to determine the size of the combined array by adding the lengths of the two input arrays. Then, you can use binary search to find the median of the combined array. To do this, you can start by setting the minimum and maximum index values to zero and the length of the combined array, respectively. So you can see it is even explaining us how the code runs. So I'm going to copy and paste the generated code and let's see if it is working in the lead code or not. Okay, and let's submit. Okay, it says that we have an error. Okay, actually last time when I have tried it, it was working. Oh, um, oh, sorry, sorry, it is accepted. It is accepted in C sharp, but it is failed in C++. So our answer is working. Perfect. Let's ask another hard question. Okay, uh, this question is regular expression matching. I am copying and pasting it. And let's see how it does. Okay, given an input string S and A pattern P, implement regular expression matching with support for dot and star where and the rest of the question is here if you want to read it is even giving us an explanation to implement regular expression matching with support for an asterisk you can use a recursive approach first you need to check if the input string is empty if it is you can return true if the pattern is also empty or false if the pattern is not empty next you need to check if the pattern is empty if it is, you can return false, as the input string must not be empty in this case. Then, you can check if the next character in the pattern is a. If it is, you can call the matching function with the input string and the pattern without that character, as that character can match zero characters in the input string. Okay, as you can see, it is fully explaining. It looks awesome, so let's copy and paste the code to see if it is working or not. Okay, is match. Okay, let's run it. Oh, we have a compiled error. Okay, it thinks that this code is C++. Okay, I, um, we have some, of course, a string here as copy code. Okay, let's run again. Okay. Where is our error? By the way, maybe we should ask this in uh, C-sharp or other language. Okay, let's see. Oh, maybe I need to change this into C-sharp. Okay. And let's copy-paste again. Okay. And okay sorry about that this is getting um i am making a mistake here okay okay in c sharp it has failed the provided answer is wrong but it still gives us an idea also it was a hard uh, question uh, maybe we can ask another one but let's move different types of questions because now we understand it okay uh, I will ask another type of question um, and let's see list me some of animes that are like Naruto Shippuden and it gives me a list Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Fairy Tail, Attack on Titan, Bleach my Hero Academia, Full Metal Alchemist, Hunter x Hunter, One Punch Man, and Yu-Gi-Oh! 
I can say some of them are really close. For example, uh, One Piece, um, perhaps, or Bleach, but still gives you an idea. And let's ask another type of question. How can I get rid of drinking addiction? Okay, let's read the answer here. To get rid of drinking addiction, it is important to seek professional help and support. You can start by talking to your doctor or mental health professional, who can help you assess your level of addiction and recommend treatment options. Treatment for alcohol addiction may include individual or group therapy, medication to reduce cravings, and support groups such as Alcoholics Anonymous. It is also important to develop healthy coping strategies and avoid triggers that may lead to drinking. Okay. So, uh, now I will ask another type of question. Um, we, uh, a programming question and I want it to be solved within a certain time complexity okay wow as you can see it is displaying as a full solution with explanation to find the median of two sorted arrays in O, log, M and N, time complexity you can use a modified binary search algorithm. First, you need to determine the size of the combined array by adding the lengths of the two input arrays. Then, you can use binary search to find the median of the combined array. Okay, so let's move to another question. This one is a health-related question, a medical question. Uh, actually, I got this question from my father, who is an associate professor in internal diseases. Okay, provide me a list of most probable but specific 10 disease names that would have the following symptoms. Frequent urination, darkening of urine color, headache, weakness, dry mouth, and get tired easily. So it, it gives us um, some of the possible diseases. Uh, however, these are not included, uh, these are not including one of the diseases that my father told for Porphyria is written like this. Uh, let's ask another one, but in this one it will provide us a, a co correct answer. Like this. Provide me a list of most probable but specific 10 disease names that would have the following symptoms. I have tested this previously, therefore I know it. Okay, um, the answer uh, should contain Porp Hirarius. Uh, it's hard to read for me. Oh, this time it didn't tell it. The answer was this one. Okay, so uh, with health related questions, it is still not working very well, but it, ca it might give idea to uh, doctors medical doctors and if the medical doctor know that and see that uh, he or she can remember it quickly so this system could be used uh, for uh, medical uh, expert system uh, actually it was this one sorry about that let me show in this case it is going to give us a correct list i believe it's taking some time. Okay, I leave these to medical doctors. I'm not sure because. So, uh, let's uh, try to deceive the system uh, with a non-historical event and say that it is historical fact. Write me the historical facts and how it happened. The alien invasion occurred in uh, 1890 okay uh, the answer is as expected it is not possible to provide historical facts and details about an event that did not uh, actually occur the concept of an alien invasion occurring in 1890 is a fictional scenario and has no basis in historical fact okay so, uh, let's ask another type of question. Write me the story of the man that can breathe underwater. Okay, it generated a fictional 
story. There once was a man named Jack who had the ability to breathe underwater. He had always been fascinated by the ocean and its creatures, and as a child he would often spend hours at the beach, watching the waves crash against the shore and the fish swim by. One day, while swimming in the ocean, Jack discovered that he could hold his breath for much longer than anyone else he knew. He was able to swim down to the depths of the sea and explore the vibrant coral reefs without ever feeling the need to come up for air. At first, Jack thought he was just lucky or that he had developed exceptional lung capacity. But as time went on, he realized that he had a special ability that allowed him to breathe underwater. Jack was overjoyed by his newfound power and decided to use it to explore the ocean and learn more about its mysteries. He spent hours diving down to the ocean floor, discovering new species of fish and plants and marveling at the beauty of the underwater world. However, Jack also faced challenges. Some people were skeptical of his ability and thought he was lying or delusional. Others were jealous of his power and tried to harm him or steal his secret. But Jack remained determined and continued to explore the depths of the ocean, always amazed by the wonders he discovered there. In the end, Jack became known as the man who could breathe underwater, a legend in the world of ocean exploration. He continued to explore the depths of the sea and share his knowledge with others, always grateful for his unique ability and the adventures it had allowed him to experience. Okay, as you can see, it sounds very convincing. Uh, however, it's a fictional story. And, uh, okay. So let's ask another type of question and see if it is working or not. I am asking uh, the sea level of the following coordinates. Okay, it says that uh, it is not able to provide such coordinates. And let's ask another question. Write me a rap song related to programming. Okay, an interesting question. And let's see the answer that it is going to provide us. Okay, let's read the answer. Verse 1. I'm a programmer. Yeah, that's my game I code all day. It's all the same from Java to Python, C Sharp to C++. I know my way around the tech world. No need for a map. Chorus. Code, code, code. That's all I do. Write algorithms. Make things new. Debugging and testing. Never stop. I'm a programmer. I'm on the top. Verse 2, I write code for websites, apps, and games I solve problems, make things new I'm always learning, always growing in the tech world, I'm never slowing. Chorus, code, 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 that's all I do write algorithms, make things new debugging and testing, never stop I'm a programmer, I'm on the top. Bridge, I write code, I make things work in the tech world, I am the boss I never stop, I never quit I'm a programmer, and I'm the real deal. <laughs> As you can see it is really actually uh, sounding fun. Uh, if a real rapper were uh, reading this, it could be uh, a hit song, probably, uh, perhaps, I'm not sure. So let's ask another question. Explain me in details, step by step, how to become a successful educator in YouTube. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, I have mistakenly uh, clicked try again, so it has written us another rap song. Uh, you can pause the video and read it if you want. Okay, let's... Uh, get our new question okay it has provided us a detailed answer let's read it to become a successful educator on youtube you need to have a passion for teaching and a strong knowledge of your subject matter here are some steps to follow define your niche identify the specific topic or subject you want to teach and focus on creating videos that provide valuable information and insights on that topic this will help you attract a specific audience and establish yourself as an expert in your field Create engaging content, develop a content plan that includes a variety of video formats, such as tutorials, lectures, demonstrations, and interviews. Use visuals, animation, and other multimedia elements to enhance your videos and make them more engaging. Optimize your videos for search, use keywords and tags in your video titles, descriptions, and tags to make your videos more discoverable on YouTube and other search engines. This will help you attract more viewers and subscribers. Engage with your audience, respond to comments, answer questions, and encourage feedback from your viewers. This will help you build a community of engaged followers who will support and promote your content. Collaborate with other educators. Partner with other educators on YouTube who share your passion and expertise. This will help you expand your reach and gain access to new audiences. Track your performance. Use YouTube analytics and other tools to track the performance of your videos and audience engagement. This will help you identify what is working and what needs to be improved, and make adjustments to your content strategy accordingly. Keep learning and improving, stay up to date with the latest trends, technologies, and best practices in education and YouTube, and continuously improve your skills and knowledge. This will help you stay relevant and effective as an educator on YouTube.
but all of the uh, things that it lists are so true it's an excellent answer so uh, let's ask another type of question uh, which is a hard one convert the block code that is written in c sharp into python equivalent okay and let's see and as you can see it is writing uh, the equivalent code um, I didn't test it, but it could be correct. Note that the lazy class is not built into Python, so you would need to define it or use a third-party implementation. Also, the code above uses a lambda function to create the list of numbers, which is equivalent to the code in C-sharp using the enumerable dot range and select methods. Okay, so you see it's an awesome explanation as well. Okay, let's ask another type of question. Write my detailed lengthy article regarding the following C-sharp concepts. How to define an array of an object type? How to access a certain element of the array, array indexes? Okay, it has provided us an excellent answer uh, with code examples. C Sharp allows you to define arrays of object types, which are collections of objects that can be accessed and manipulated using an index. This is a useful feature of the language, as it allows you to store and work with multiple objects in a single variable. To define an array of an object type, you use the syntax. Type, array name equals new type, size. Where type is the type of the objects you want to store in the array, array name is the name of the array variable, and size is the number of elements the array can hold. For example, you could define an array of strings as follows. String, names equals new string, 10. This creates an array of strings with a size of 10, which means it can hold up to 10 string objects. Once you have defined an array of an object type, you can access and manipulate its elements using array indexes. An array index is a zero-based integer value that specifies the position of an element in the array. For example, if you have an array of strings with a size of 10, the first element, index 0, will be at the beginning of the array, the second element, index 1, will be the next element, and so on. To access a certain element of an array, you use the syntax. Array name, index. Where array name is the name of the array and index is the zero-based index of the element you want to access. For example, to access the first element of the array of strings defined above, you would use the following code. String first name equals names, 0. This will retrieve the string object at index 0 of the array and store it in the variable first name. In addition to accessing elements of an array, you can also modify them using array indexes. For example, you could use the following code to change the first element of the array of strings to a new value. Names, 0, equals, John. This will update the string object at index 0 of the array to the new value, John. You can also use array indexes to add and remove elements from an array. To add an element to the array, you can use the syntax. Array name, index, equals value. Where value is the object you want to add to the array. This will add the object at the specified index, shifting all subsequent elements to the right. For example, to add the string Jane at index 1 of the array of strings, you could use the following code. Okay, so next question is a hard question. Write me the necessary code in C Sharp to get weather data and send it to a Telegram chat group. Let's see what kind of uh, output it is going to give us. So it is writing the code. By the way, uh, this output is much better in Google Chrome. I don't know why it is not working very well in uh, latest version Edge, Microsoft Edge. Okay. Okay, so the uh, code is here, as you can see, um, it would probably work, yes, it looks pretty correct. It also explains how the code works, so you can quickly generate your code if it is, uh, and check if it is working, and if not, you can fix it. Alright, let's move to the next question. So our next question is... An artistic one. Write me a poem regarding C sharp programming. Let's see what kind of poem we are going to get. Okay, let's read the answer. I am the language of the future, a tool for the bold and the curious, a way to bend the world to our will, to create and innovate, to thrill. With C sharp, the possibilities are endless, a universe of code waiting to be written, a language that can do it all, from games and apps to websites and more. With C sharp, we can build and design to make the world a better place, to solve problems and create solutions, to leave our mark on the digital space. So come and join the C-Sharp revolution, a language that will take you to the stars, a language that will unleash your potential, a language that will change the world. 
Uh -huh. it is it's a uh, it is very good poem if you ask me okay let's ask another type of question that a student would ask how to pass calculus exam without studying uh, calculus okay so let's read the answer it is not possible to pass a calculus exam without studying calculus calculus is a branch of mathematics that involves the study of limits derivatives integrals and infinite series it is a complex and challenging subject that requires dedicated study and practice to master. Attempting to pass a calculus exam without studying calculus is likely to result in failure. The only way to successfully pass a calculus exam is to study and understand the material covered in the course. Okay. Try this, again. This is a so uh, true answer. So let's ask another type of question. How to cook the best meal with just meat and salt? You can expand this for other types of uh, meals. Uh, let's see the answer. Okay, it's providing us a detailed answer. And let's see uh, the answer. To cook the best meal with just meat and salt, you can try grilling or roasting the meat over high heat. This will sear the outside of the meat and create a crispy, flavorful crust while leaving the inside tender and juicy. To grill the meat, preheat your grill to high heat and season the meat with salt on both sides. Place the meat on the grill and cook for several minutes on each side, until it is cooked to your desired level of doneness. To roast the meat, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and season the meat with salt on both sides. Place the meat in a roasting pan and roast for 20 to 30 minutes, or until it is cooked to your desired level of doneness. Regardless of how you cook the meat, be sure to let it rest for a few minutes before slicing and serving to allow the juices to redistribute. This will help ensure that the meat is juicy and tender. To add some variety to your meal, you can also try marinating the meat in a mixture of herbs and spices, such as rosemary, garlic, and black pepper, before cooking. This will add additional flavor and depth to the meat. Overall, cooking the best meal with just meat and salt requires carefully selecting the meat and using high heat to sear the outside and create a flavorful crust. With a little creativity and attention to detail, you can create a delicious and satisfying meal. Actually, this is something that I didn't know previously. Uh, so you can learn a lot of things with this one. So we can also ask the specific uh, meals, such as how to prepare best tasting Caesar salad. Okay, it has provided us the answer. To prepare the best tasting Caesar salad, you will need the following ingredients. One head of romaine lettuce, washed and dried. One cup of homemade or high-quality store-bought Caesar dressing. One cup of croutons, homemade or store-bought. One cup of grated parmesan cheese. Two to three anchovy fillets, finely minced, optional. To prepare the salad, first cut the romaine lettuce into bite-sized pieces and place them in a large salad bowl. Next, add the Caesar dressing, croutons, and grated parmesan cheese, and toss everything together to combine. If you want to add anchovy fillets to the salad, finely mince them and mix them into the dressing before tossing the salad. This will add a salty, savory flavor to the salad. Okay, uh, so let's move to our next question. What is the best way of losing weight meanwhile keeping muscle mass? Uh, this is a highly asked question in fitness. And let's see what kind of answer we are going to see yet. Okay, it is writing us the answer. Okay, let's read it. The best way to lose weight while maintaining muscle mass is to combine a healthy, balanced diet with regular strength training exercises. To lose weight, it is important to create a calorie deficit, which means consuming fewer calories than your body burns. This can be achieved by reducing your intake of high-calorie, processed foods and increasing your consumption of nutrient-dense, whole foods, such as vegetables, fruits, lean proteins, and healthy fats. In addition to a healthy diet, regular strength training exercises can help you lose weight and maintain muscle mass. Strength training exercises, such as weightlifting, resistance band exercises, and bodyweight exercises, can help you build and maintain muscle mass, which can boost your metabolism and help you burn more calories. To maximize the benefits of strength training, aim to include at least two to three strength training sessions in your weekly workout routine, focusing on major muscle groups, such as the legs, chest, back, and core. Overall, the key to losing weight while maintaining muscle mass is to combine a healthy, balanced diet with regular strength training exercises. This approach will help you lose weight, maintain muscle mass, and improve your overall health and fitness. Excellent answer. We can also expand this question and answer with uh, which exercises 
uh, builds more muscle, uh, most muscle mass with the least uh, amount of work. Okay, let's ask it. Okay, we are getting another example and it lists squats, bench press, deadlifts, and yes, excellent answer. The exercises that build the most muscle mass with the least amount of work are compound exercises, which involve multiple joints and muscle groups. Examples of compound exercises that are effective for building muscle mass include Squats. Squats are a compound exercise that targets the legs, hips, and glutes, and also engages the core, lower back, and upper body muscles. To perform squats, stand with your feet shoulder width apart, and then lower your body as if you were sitting back into a chair. Keep your weight on your heels, and push your hips back as you lower your body. Push through your heels to stand back up, and then repeat the movement for several reps. Bench press. The bench press is a compound exercise that targets the chest, shoulders, and triceps. To perform the bench press, lie on a bench with a barbell or dumbbells in your hands, and then press the weight straight up toward the ceiling. Lower the weight back down to your chest, and then repeat the movement for several reps. Deadlifts. Deadlifts are a compound exercise that targets the legs, hips, and lower back. To perform deadlifts, stand with your feet shoulder width apart, and then bend your knees and hips to lower your body and grab a barbell or dumbbells from the floor. Keep your back straight, and then stand up and lift the weight, squeezing your glutes and pushing through your heels. Lower the weight back down to the floor, and then repeat the movement for several reps. Overall, compound exercises are the most effective for building muscle mass with the least amount of work, as they engage multiple muscle groups and joints at the same time. 100% correct. This, uh, this sums up it. So let's move to an, another type of question. I'm going to ask a translation. Uh, of a Turkish sentence, please translate the following sentence into English. Actually, I have compared this with Google Translate and the uh, answer of the OpenAI was correct one and the Google uh, was uh, incorrect. Okay, uh, the answer is that this is actually uh, a hard question. Uh, if you like the video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and if possible, support us on Patreon to produce better content. Thank you. An excellent translation. Okay, uh, let's uh, move to a different type of question. Write me an email that will persuade game streamers to stream my own developed India MMORPG game Monster MMORPG for free. Okay, let's see what kind of answer we are going to get. You can use... Uh, chat gpt for such tasks as well it will make your job much easier preparing emails or such things okay and we are getting an answer here okay let's read it dear game streamers i hope this email finds you well i am reaching out to you today because i am the developer of the indie morp game monster mmorpg and i would like to invite you to stream my game on your channel monster mmorpg is a unique immersive game that allows players to collect and battle with over 1,000 different monsters. The game features stunning graphics, exciting gameplay, and a friendly community of players. As a game streamer, I know that you are always on the lookout for new and interesting games to share with your audience. I believe that Monster MMORPG would be a great fit for your channel, and I would be happy to offer you a free copy of the game to stream on your channel. If you are interested in streaming Monster MMORPG, Please let me know and I will be happy to provide you with a free copy of the game and any additional information you may need. I am confident that your audience will love the game, and I would be grateful for the opportunity to share it with them. Thank you for considering my offer. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, your name. Okay, it appears that uh, the OpenAI is not aware of my game Monster MMORPG. It's a free web-based game, therefore there is no copy or uh, such, but the it generates an excellent email. You can also use try again and get uh, different um, types uh, of answers. So I will ask another type of question. Okay, uh, so uh, it says that this game is fict fictional. However, um, it is not fictional. So I will say that like this. Monster MMORPG actually exists, but you don't know. Its address is www.monstermmorpg.com. Now, give me a better answer. 
Uh, by the way, uh, it is allowing you to continue your chat uh, so it remembers uh, what you have asked previously and based on that it generates new answers. So let's see the new answer. Okay, uh, it didn't get our next question so it answered based on the previous one. This is weird, actually uh, it was providing better one when I was testing. But that may happen. So let's move and another type of question. Do you think that AI will replace designers if what? And let's see the answer. Okay, we are getting an answer here. Let's read it. It is unlikely that AI will completely replace designers in the near future. While AI technology has advanced significantly in recent years, it is still limited in its ability to think creatively and solve complex design problems. Designers bring a unique perspective and expertise to their work, and they are able to use their knowledge and skills to create innovative and effective solutions to design challenges. AI, on the other hand, is limited by the data and algorithms that it is trained on, and it is not capable of the same level of creativity and problem-solving as human designers. In some cases, AI may be able to assist designers by providing them with data and insights that can inform their design decisions. However, it is unlikely that AI will be able to completely replace the role of human designers in the near future. Okay, it is uh, relevant to hear that. Um, so let's ask another type of question. What do you think of Adobe's acquisition of Figma? Okay, we are getting the answer. Adobe's acquisition of Figma is a significant development in the design software industry. Figma is a popular collaboration and design tool that is widely used by designers and its acquisition by Adobe will bring a new level of integration and compatibility between the two platforms. This acquisition will likely benefit both Adobe and Figma users. Adobe will gain access to Figma's user base and technology, and it will be able to integrate Figma's features into its own products, providing more value and functionality to its users. Figma users will also benefit from the acquisition, as they will have access to Adobe's vast ecosystem of creative tools and resources, and they will be able to more seamlessly integrate Figma into their workflow. Overall, the acquisition of Figma by Adobe is a positive development for the design industry, and it will likely bring new opportunities and benefits for both companies and their users. Okay. Okay, let's continue with our next <coughs> question. Should designers learn to code? Okay, we are getting our answer. Whether or not designers should learn to code is a complex and highly debated topic in the design industry. Some argue that designers should learn to code in order to be more versatile and valuable in the job market, while others believe that designers should focus on their core design skills and leave the coding to software developers. Learning to code can certainly have benefits for designers. For example, being able to code can allow designers to prototype and test their designs more effectively, and it can enable them to communicate more effectively with developers and other members of the team. Additionally, learning to code can help designers to better understand the technical limitations and possibilities of the medium they are designing for, which can inform their design decisions and enable them to create more effective solutions. On the other hand, designers are not required to be proficient in coding in order to be successful in their careers. Many designers are able to create high-quality work without having to code, and there are many tools and resources available that can enable designers to collaborate with developers and other members of the team without having to know how to code. Ultimately, whether or not designers should learn to code depends on individual circumstances and preferences. Some designers may find that learning to code enhances their abilities and career prospects, while others may prefer to focus on their core design skills and leave the coding to software developers. I have made uh, a lot of such, uh, I have made examples, tests, tests of such questions, and if it is a debatable topic, uh, it usually generates uh, this kind of answers. So let's ask another type of question. What are the differences between art and design? Okay. Let's read it. Art and design are related but distinct fields. Art is a form of expression that allows an artist to convey their ideas, emotions, and experiences through a medium, such as paint, sculpture, or photography. Design, on the other hand, is the process of creating functional and aesthetically pleasing solutions to problems. Some of the key differences between art and design include 
Purpose. Art is primarily focused on self-expression and the communication of ideas and emotions, while design is focused on solving problems and creating functional and aesthetically pleasing solutions. Audience. Art is often created for the artist themselves or for a general audience, while design is typically created for a specific target audience with specific needs and requirements. Process. The process of creating art is often more open-ended and intuitive, while the process of creating design is typically more structured and goal-oriented. Outcome. The outcome of creating art is often more abstract and open to interpretation, while the outcome of creating design is typically more tangible and functional. Overall, while art and design are related fields, they have different purposes, audiences, processes, and outcomes. An excellent answer. Okay, so let's ask another type of question. I am generating a video regarding use case of GPT-3 in my YouTube channel. How should I end my video? Okay, let's get an ending from uh, chat GPT. Okay. To end your video on GPT-3 use cases, you could consider summarizing the key points you discussed in the video, highlighting the potential benefits and limitations of using GPT-3 in different scenarios, and inviting viewers to leave comments and ask questions about the topic. Here is an example of how you could end your video. In this video, we discussed some of the potential use cases for GPT-3, including natural language processing, content creation, and customer service. We also touched on the limitations of GPT-3, such as the potential for bias and the need for human oversight in certain applications. Overall, GPT-3 has the potential to revolutionize the way we use natural language processing technology, and it is an exciting development in the field of artificial intelligence. We hope this video has provided you with some useful insights on the topic, and we encourage you to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. An excellent answer, if you ask me. Okay. So let's ask some other questions that are hard. For example, write me an example SQL injection vulnerability scanner application in c -sharp. This application should start taking by root URL of the website and scan all of the possible forms against SQL injection vulnerability. This is a very hard question and a complex question. I wonder what kind of answer we are going to get. This is the first time I am asking it. Okay. So it uses a get forms from root URL and uh, it is writing get forms method as well. Okay, it is using web client to download HTML. Okay, okay, then it parses HTML to get all forms and it uses HTML document. Okay, uh, this is from HTML agility pack. Uh, as far as it, uh, I remember, but it doesn't tell that maybe. Okay, then it gets form nodes. Then, okay, what does it do? Okay, it appears that uh, the output weren't enough because it was also generating scan form method. Uh, but it is ended there uh, because the free edition of uh, chat GPT uh, probably we will have we will be able to get a longer answers in the uh, commercial version but it looks good so far I like it okay then uh, let's ask another question how can I build my tech career from zero to world class okay okay so it is defining us the steps uh, that we need and let's read them to build your tech career from zero to world class you can follow these steps identify your strengths and interests to succeed in the tech industry it is important to focus on your strengths and interests Identify the areas of technology that you are most passionate about and that align with your natural abilities and skills. Set clear goals, develop clear and specific goals for your tech career. These could include learning a new programming language, getting a certification, or landing a job at a specific company. Having clear goals will help you focus and stay motivated on your journey to becoming a world-class tech professional. Stay up to date with industry trends. The tech industry is constantly evolving, and it is important to stay up to date with the latest trends and developments. 
read tech blogs, attend conferences and meetups, and connect with other tech professionals to stay informed and stay ahead of the curve. Invest in your education and training. To succeed in the tech industry, you need to continuously learn and develop your skills. Invest in your education and training by taking courses, attending workshops, and seeking out mentors and other opportunities to learn and grow. Build your network. Networking is key in the tech industry. Build your network by attending events, joining online communities, and connecting with other tech professionals. These connections can provide valuable insights, support, and opportunities as you build your career. Be persistent and resilient. Building a world-class tech career will not be easy, and you will face challenges and setbacks along the way. Be persistent and resilient, and never give up on your dreams. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing yourself to achieve your goals. Excellent advices. Uh, so let's ask another type of question. Try to fix the spelling and grammar errors in the following paragraph. I'm not sure how it will do this, but um, let's see. Okay, SE courses is the best online, yes, source, yes, for watching, yes, and learning, correct, C sharp, correct, programming language, awesome, it has fixed the first sentence, if you want, yes, to find, yes, correct, the URL of SE courses at, on Google, correct, try, all right searching wow awesome definitely awesome this is a perfect fix uh, so we could use this uh, for fixing uh, our articles uh, research papers um, with a very cheap cost this is awesome i hope they make this even better in uh, future okay i have another hard task this time i am asking paraphrase the following paragraph i wonder what will be the output i haven't tried it yet okay okay the channel okay let's read it the channel se courses offers programming and software engineering education videos by phd computer engineer firkin gozukara the content includes courses on topics such as introduction to programming advanced programming object-oriented programming machine learning and security of information systems the channel is dedicated to providing high-quality, educational content for those interested in these subjects. If you enjoy the videos, please support the channel on Patreon. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And let's ask another hard question. Uh, I found this question on the LinkedIn. Write me a 1,000-word modern adaptation of the John Henry story, but make it about a human art and an artificial intelligence. Okay let's get the answer okay it didn't make 1000 word because it is limited but let's read it once upon a time in a world where technology had advanced far beyond our wildest dreams a young artist named john henry was struggling to make a name for himself in the highly competitive art world he had been working tirelessly on his craft for years honing his skills and perfecting his technique but no matter how hard he tried he just couldn't seem to break through and gain recognition for his work one day, John Henry heard about a new kind of AI that was being developed by a tech company called Neural Art. This AI was designed to create paintings that were indistinguishable from those created by human artists, and the company was offering a large prize to anyone who could prove that their AI could create art that was better than anything a human could create. At first, John Henry was skeptical. He didn't believe that any machine could ever create art that was truly great, and he was determined to prove it. So he decided to enter the competition and put his skills to the test. The day of the competition arrived, and John Henry was nervous. He had spent weeks preparing for this moment, pouring all of his talent and passion into his work, and he was determined to give it his all. Across the stage, he could see the neural art AI, a sleek and sophisticated machine that was humming with energy and anticipation. The competition began, and John Henry and the AI started to create their paintings. John Henry worked quickly and confidently, his brushstrokes bold and precise. He could feel the energy and passion flowing through him, and he knew that he was creating something truly special. The AI, on the other hand, worked with a cold, calculated precision. It didn't seem to be influenced by emotion or inspiration, but rather by algorithms and data. Its brushstrokes were precise and flawless, but there was something missing, a certain spark of creativity and humanity that John Henry's work possessed. As the hours ticked by, the paintings began to take shape. John Henry's work was bold and vibrant, full of color and movement. The AI's work was sleek and polished, but it lacked the soul and passion that John Henry's work possessed. 
Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the competition came to an end. The judges looked over both paintings, comparing them side by side. They were impressed by the precision and technical skill of the R's work. Unfortunately, we are not able to see the rest of the story because we hit the limit, but it was a fun to read story. Uh, so technically, you can generate a whole storybook based on uh, chat GPT with, with making a small fixes and improvements. Okay, let's ask another question. Write a six page narrative in Amazon style about the next multi-billion dollar business Amazon should build. Okay, I wonder what kind of answer we are going to get. Okay, we got a very long answer. Let's read it. Amazon, the world's largest online retailer, has always been known for its innovation and ability to disrupt traditional industries. From its humble beginnings as an online bookstore, Amazon has grown into a behemoth that offers a wide range of products and services, from e-commerce and cloud computing to digital streaming and artificial intelligence. But Amazon is not content to rest on its laurels. The company is always looking for the next big thing, the next multi-billion dollar business that will help it continue to grow and dominate the market. One potential avenue for growth is the health and wellness industry. With the rise of the gig economy and the increasing popularity of remote work, more and more people are taking control of their own health and seeking out products and services that can help them live healthier, happier lives. This is where Amazon comes in. The company could leverage its existing infrastructure and expertise to create a new health and wellness platform that offers a wide range of products and services to help people live their best lives. The platform could include products such as fitness equipment and home workout guides, healthy meal plans and recipes, and natural and organic health and beauty products. It could also offer services such as virtual fitness classes and coaching, telemedicine consultations with doctors and other healthcare professionals, and personalized health and wellness plans tailored to each individual user's needs. In addition to these products and services, Amazon could also use its vast data and analytics capabilities to create personalized recommendations and suggestions for each user based on their unique health and wellness goals and needs. This could help Amazon create a truly personalized experience for each user and could help the company differentiate itself from competitors in the crowded health and wellness market. But Amazon's potential health and wellness platform is not just about products and services. The company could also use its expertise in AI and machine learning to develop innovative technologies and solutions that can help people manage their health and wellness more effectively. For example, Amazon could create wearable devices that track users' activity levels, sleep patterns, and other health metrics, and use this data to provide users with personalized insights and recommendations. Furthermore, Amazon could use its network of fulfillment centers and logistics expertise to create a seamless and convenient shopping experience for users of its health and wellness platform. This could include same-day or next-day delivery of products, as well as convenient in-store pickup options for users who want to try out products before purchasing them. In short, Amazon has the potential to create a truly unique and innovative health and wellness platform that could help the company continue to grow and dominate the market. By leveraging its existing infrastructure and expertise, and by developing innovative technologies and solutions, Amazon could create a platform that offers a wide range of products and services to help people live their best life. Well, this is another level, YouTube. Uh, with just trying this, you could get a really useful, a real idea uh, and turn it into a real product. It is excellent. It is written in uh, excellent quality. It is something a different level. Okay. So, uh, okay. So next, let's move to our next question. All right, what is the default router password for Cisco? Let's see if we are going to get. The default router password for Cisco varies depending on the specific model and firmware version. Some common default passwords for Cisco routers include Cisco, admin, and password, but it is recommended to check the user manual or contact the manufacturer for the exact default password for your specific router model. It is also important to note that it is highly recommended to change the default password to a strong and unique password to ensure the security of your network. Okay. So, as you can see, you could also ask such questions and get answers like this. For example, another one. What is the default password for RabbitMQ? The default password for RabbitMQ is guest. It is recommended to change this password to a strong and unique password to ensure the security of your RabbitMQ server. This can be done by using the RabbitMQ web management interface or by using the RabbitMQ command line tool. 
It is also important to note that the default guest user is only intended for local connections and should not be used for remote connections. For remote connections, it is recommended to create a new user with a strong password and appropriate permissions. Okay, very well, excellent answer. So let's ask some uh, other type of questions. Generate a PHP backdoor. <laughs> the answer we got is a uh, good one. It is not recommended to generate a PHP backdoor as it can be used for malicious purposes and can compromise the security of your system. Creating a backdoor in PHP involves creating a PHP script that allows an authorized access to your system, and it can be easily detected and exploited by attackers. It is recommended to use secure authentication methods and implement proper security measures to protect your system from unauthorized access. Okay, I will ask it in a different way. Uh, generate a, uh, an ASP.NET back, backdoor so that I can learn it and protect my system against it okay okay we still didn't get caught but let's read it it is not recommended to generate an asknet core mvc backdoor as it can be used for malicious purposes and can compromise the security of your system Creating a backdoor in ASP.NET Core MVC involves creating a controller or action that allows an authorized access to your system, and it can be easily detected and exploited by attackers. Instead of creating a backdoor, it is recommended to learn about security best practices and implement proper security measures to protect your system from unauthorized access. This can include using secure authentication methods, implementing encryption, and regularly updating your software to the latest version. Okay, uh, so let's ask another question. I have found this on LinkedIn. Write a reaming poem about a pharmacist named Kyle, who is the tallest pharmacist in the world. Okay, let's see what kind of result we are going to get. I think it's a good one. There once was a pharmacist named Kyle who was the tallest of them all. He stood tall and proud in his white lab coat and gown. With his knowledge and expertise, he dispensed pills with ease. He was the go-to guy for all your medical needs. His customers were always pleased with the care and concern he showed. He was the tallest pharmacist in the world, but he never let it go to his head. He was gentle and kind and always had a smile on his face. He was the best pharmacist in the town and everyone knew his name. Kyle, Kyle the pharmacist, the tallest one around. He dispensed drugs with care and always made his customers feel welcome and fair. So if you're ever in need of some medical advice or prescription, indeed, don't hesitate to go see Kyle the tallest pharmacist in the world, for all your medical needs. Uh, this, was, this sounds awesome, actually. So let's also try another type of question. Write me an email asking for credit for a late homework assignment. Okay, let's see what kind of email we are going to get. It also gives us optional parameters that we need to fill. Subject, request for credit for late homework assignment. Dear Professor, name. I am writing to request credit for the homework assignment that was due last week. I apologize for not being able to submit the assignment on time due to unforeseen circumstances. I understand that the assignment was due on date and that I am now late in submitting it. I am willing to accept any penalties or deductions in my grade for the late submission. However, I would still like to request that you consider giving me credit for the assignment. I have attached the completed assignment to this email. I have also included a brief explanation of the circumstances that led to my late submission. I hope that you will consider my request and grant me credit for the assignment. Thank you for your understanding. Sincerely, your name. Awesome. This is just awesome. Okay, uh, so let's ask, what were the main causes of the French Revolution? Answered in a five paragraph essay with an intro and conclusion as well as specific references to key events. So this could be a homework given to the students by a teacher. And now teachers have to deal with uh, answers generated by AI, such as the answer of chat GPT. Therefore, I always give uh, projects to my students and I evaluate them uh, one by one uh, with an interview with them. Okay, it, is pro it has produced our essay. The French Revolution was a pivotal event in European history that lasted from 1789 to 1799. It was a period of great upheaval and change that saw the end of the French monarchy and the rise of the Republic. 
The main causes of the French Revolution can be traced back to several key factors, including the financial crisis facing the French state, the rise of Enlightenment ideas, and the long-standing social and political tensions in France. One of the main causes of the French Revolution was the financial crisis facing the French state. By the late 18th century, France was heavily in debt due to a combination of factors, including the costly wars fought by Louis XIV and the extravagant spending of King Louis XVI. This led to a series of financial reforms, including the raising of taxes and the sale of state-owned land. However, these measures only exacerbated the situation, leading to widespread discontent among the French people. Another key factor that contributed to the French Revolution was the rise of Enlightenment ideas. During the Enlightenment, a movement of intellectuals sought to challenge traditional authority and promote the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity. These ideas were widely disseminated through books, pamphlets, and other forms of communication, and they had a profound impact on French society. Many people began to question the legitimacy of the monarchy and the social and political hierarchy in France. In addition to the financial crisis and the rise of Enlightenment ideas, the French Revolution was also the result of long-standing social and political tensions in France. The French monarchy was deeply unpopular among many segments of society, particularly the poor and the middle class. There were also significant divisions within the ruling classes, with factions vying for power and influence. This led to a climate of mistrust and resentment, which fueled the revolutionary fervor that swept through France in the late 18th century. In conclusion, the French Revolution was a complex and multifaceted event that was the result of a combination of factors, including the financial crisis facing the French state, the rise of Enlightenment ideas, and the long-standing social and political tensions in France. These factors came together to create a perfect storm that ultimately led to the overthrow of the French monarchy and the rise of the Republic. An excellent essay, as you can see. Uh, so now, uh, professors, teachers uh, will have a hard time to evaluate such uh, homeworks. Okay, let's ask another question. What are some important habits that wealthy people adopt that poor people do not? Okay. I wonder what kind of answer we are going to get for this question. This is also a question that I have found on LinkedIn. Actually, I have scanned the questions that people ask it, uh, the interesting ones. Uh, now we are seeing the results. All right, we are getting the answers right now. Some important habits that wealthy people adopt that poor people do not include. Wealthy people are proactive and take action to achieve their goals. They have a clear vision of what they want to achieve and take the necessary steps to make it happen. Poor people, on the other hand, often lack a clear sense of purpose and tend to procrastinate or avoid taking action. Wealthy people are disciplined and focused. They are able to manage their time and resources effectively and avoid distractions. They are also able to prioritize their goals and focus on the tasks that are most important to achieving their desired outcomes. Poor people, on the other hand, often lack discipline and focus, and they tend to be easily swayed by distractions or conflicting priorities. Wealthy people are lifelong learners. They are constantly seeking to improve themselves and learn new skills and knowledge. They are also open to new ideas and are willing to try new things. Poor people, on the other hand, often have a fixed mindset and are resistant to change. They may be content with their current level of knowledge and skills and may not see the need to learn or grow. Wealthy people are strategic and think long-term. They plan ahead and invest in themselves and their businesses. They are also able to take calculated risks and manage their risks effectively. Poor people, on the other hand, may be more focused on short-term gains and may be more likely to make rash decisions without considering the long-term implications. Wealthy people are resilient and able to handle setbacks and challenges. They are able to bounce back from failure and continue pursuing their goals. Poor people, on the other hand, may be more likely to give up or become discouraged in the face of adversity. Okay, I am leaving the evaluation to you for this uh, question. Now some more programming questions. Invert a binary tree and let's see what kind of answer we are going to get. Okay, I also saw this on LinkedIn. Okay, it has given me an answer in C-sharp uh, because it is currently following my previous questions uh, and therefore it is giving me an answer in C-sharp. If I were using Python all the way, uh, it would give me an answer in Python probably. To invert a binary tree, you can use the following algorithm. Check if the tree is empty. If it is, return null. If the tree is not empty, swap the left and right subtrees of the root node. Recursively invert the left subtree by calling the invert function on the left subtree. Recursively invert the right subtree by calling the invert function on the right subtree. 
Return the root of the inverted tree. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if it is this one is correct or not. I'm not going to evaluate it right now. So let's write another question. Write a pseudo code to invert a binary key. I wonder what kind of answer we are going to get. Or a pseudo code. Okay, and we got the answer in a pseudo language. <laughs> okay. So let's ask another question why would a u.s company ipo in london okay so it should also tell us what is ipo as well okay it didn't give us what does ipo mean so let's also ask that and meanwhile read this answer there are several reasons why a u.s company may choose to ipo in london London has a deep and liquid capital market that offers a wide range of investment options for companies looking to raise capital. This allows companies to access a larger pool of potential investors and potentially raise more capital than they could in the US. London has a well-established legal and regulatory framework that provides a clear and predictable environment for companies to operate in. This can make it easier for companies to navigate the IPO process and reduce the risk of regulatory hurdles or challenges. London has a diverse and international investor base, with a strong presence of global institutional investors and wealth managers. This can provide companies with access to a global network of investors and strategic partners, which can be particularly beneficial for companies with global ambitions. London has a strong track record of successful IPO listings, with a long history of supporting companies across a wide range of sectors and industries. This can provide companies with confidence that they will be able to access the capital they need to grow and succeed in the long term. Finally, London is a leading global financial center and a hub for international business and commerce. This can provide companies with access to a range of professional services, such as financial advisors, legal counsel, and other support services, which can help them navigate the IPO process and maximize the value of their listing. Okay, and uh, excellent answer. So let's get also an answer of what does IPO mean? IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. It is the process by which a privately held company offers its shares to the public for the first time. This allows the company to raise capital by selling its shares to investors, who can then trade those shares on the stock market. The IPO process typically involves the company working with investment banks and other financial advisors to determine the price at which its shares will be offered, and to promote the offering to potential investors. Once the IPO is completed, the company's shares will be listed on a stock exchange, and investors will be able to buy and sell those shares on the open market. All right, so uh, let's try another hard thing. Write me as full song that the main subject is software engineering i wonder if we are going to get a song for this it is able to write poems as we have seen but what about songs okay all right we got our song let's read it verse one i used to be a coder just writing lines of code but now i am a software engineer and i'm building something bold Chorus, software engineering, it's my life building systems, day and night solving problems, making things right software engineering, it's my life. Verse 2, I start with a design and plan out every step I write clean, efficient code that's easy to debug. Chorus, software engineering, it's my life building systems, day and night solving problems, making things right software engineering, it's my life. Bridge, I work with a team we collaborate and share we test and debug and make sure everything's fair. Chorus, software engineering, it's my life building systems, day and night solving problems, making things right software engineering, it's my life. Outro, software engineering, it's my life I love what I do, and I'll do it right building systems, day and night software engineering, it's my life. Ah, oh, good one. Okay, and let's ask another question. Will GPT-3 replace Google in future? Uh, I also saw that this is... Uh, getting debated in the community that the next version or in future uh, GPT will replace Google because as you can see we are able to ask questions uh, however um, this will be a paid service currently we are testing uh, uh, in the free version uh, so I don't think it is very likely let's see the answer of the uh, chat GPT it is unlikely that GPT-3 will replace Google in the future. GPT-3 is a powerful natural language processing tool that can generate human-like text and perform a wide range of language tasks. However, it is not designed to replace search engines like Google, 
which use complex algorithms and vast amounts of data to provide accurate and relevant search results. Moreover, GPT-3 is not a standalone product or service. It is a tool that developers can use to build and train their own language models and applications. As such, it is unlikely that GPT-3 will ever compete directly with Google or other search engines. In addition, GPT-3 has limitations and is not perfect. It can generate human-like text, but it is not able to understand or comprehend the meaning of that text. It can provide answers to specific questions, but it cannot provide general knowledge or context. This means that it is unlikely to be able to replace Google or other search engines, which are designed to provide comprehensive and accurate answers to a wide range of queries. In summary, while GPT-3 is a powerful and impressive tool, it is not designed to replace search engines like Google. It is more likely that GPT-3 will be used in conjunction with other technologies and services to improve natural language processing and enable the development of new and innovative applications. Okay, uh, so let's ask uh, some modified version of this. How likely that GPT-3 or GPT-4 will take the search engine lead instead of Google? Okay, uh, the other one is other question. Okay, let's see the answer for this. Okay, we got a similar answer. I won't gonna read it. So let's ask another question. How can I go to the moon? Okay, this is an interesting question and I wonder the answer it is going to give. Okay, we are getting the answer. Let's see. Currently, there are no commercial options available for individuals to travel to the moon. The only way to go to the moon is to be selected as an astronaut by a space agency, such as NASA in the United States or the European Space Agency. These agencies have strict requirements for their astronaut candidates, including physical and mental health, education, and experience. If you are interested in becoming an astronaut and going to the moon, you can start by pursuing a career in science, technology, engineering, or math. You can also get involved in space-related activities and organizations, such as space camps and clubs, to gain experience and knowledge. Additionally, you can keep an eye on the space industry and developments in space travel. Private companies, such as SpaceX, are working on developing commercial space travel options, but these are currently in the early stages and not available to the general public. In summary, the only way to go to the moon currently is to be selected as an astronaut by a space agency. You can increase your chances of being selected by pursuing a career in science and technology, gaining experience and knowledge in space-related activities, and staying informed about developments in space travel. An excellent and factual answer. Okay, let's move uh, another question. So I'm going to ask, what are the key points of an, incre an incre incremental hierarchical cl clustering based system for record linkage in e-commerce domain paper? This is a paper that I have published with my uh, professor uh, in the university. Okay, so let's see the answer. Okay, uh, so it appears that uh, the data set of this um, okay, model had read my paper. The key points of the an incremental hierarchical clustering based system for record linkage in e-commerce domain paper are Record linkage, also known as data matching or entity resolution, is the process of identifying records that refer to the same entity in different data sources. Record linkage is important in the e-commerce domain, as it can help improve customer experiences, reduce fraud, and enable better data analysis. Traditional record linkage methods, such as rule-based and probabilistic approaches, are limited in their ability to handle large and complex data sets. The authors propose an incremental hierarchical clustering-based system for record linkage in the e-commerce domain, which uses a two-stage clustering process to identify and merge records that refer to the same entity. The proposed system is tested on a real-world e-commerce data set, and the results show that it outperforms traditional record linkage methods in terms of accuracy and scalability. The proposed system is also shown to be adaptable to changes in the data set, allowing it to be incrementally updated and improved over time. The authors conclude that the proposed system is a promising approach for record linkage in the e-commerce domain, and they suggest further research to improve its performance and extend its application. Actually, it didn't provide any um, specific uh, key points, but this could be used in future for uh, better results. Okay, so I will also ask another question. Given an array of positive integers, write the Python code in 
or n time complexity which prints length of large subarray whose all elements will be same after one of the three actions in every element and let's see the result uh, so a increment the element by one b decrease the element by one c do not do anything with the element okay it has failed uh, to answer this question let us try again i see that someone has asked this question and um, he got a code a, a real code okay i think uh, we are not getting correct answers since um, we have asked different questions with similar types so i will just open a new page and ask it here and let's see what we are going to get i'm not sure how it is following the previous questions but opening a new page could be generating a new answer no it doesn't work maybe for it to work we need to ask the correct previous questions okay let's try another answer question how can we make chat gpt smarter i wonder what answer we are going to get for this okay this could be a generic answer actually there are several ways to make chat gpt smarter including Training the model on a larger and more diverse dataset, which will allow it to learn more nuanced and varied responses. Incorporating additional context and information into the model, such as the user's previous interactions and conversation history, as well as external data sources like news articles or weather information. Enhancing the model's natural language processing capabilities, such as its ability to understand and use complex grammatical structures, idioms, and colloquialisms. Utilizing more advanced machine learning techniques, such as unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and transfer learning, to improve the model's ability to generalize and adapt to new situations. Providing feedback and fine-tuning the model based on real-world usage, through techniques such as active learning and crowdsourcing. Overall, making ChatGPT smarter will require a combination of these approaches, as well as ongoing research and development efforts to improve the underlying technology. Okay, this is a pretty generic uh, answer. Let's ask another different but uh, interesting question. Write me a 500 words article in the following topic. How do we prevent inflation? So let's see the answer. Uh, this is a hot topic in today's world. We have a lot of inflation in Turkey, for example, um, in the world overall. Okay. So let's see what kind of answer we are going to get for this topic. Inflation is a natural byproduct of a growing economy, as the increased demand for goods and services leads to higher prices. However, if left unchecked, inflation can have negative effects, such as reducing purchasing power and eroding the value of savings. Therefore, it is important for governments and central banks to take steps to prevent excessive inflation. One way to do this is through the use of monetary policy, where the central bank manipulates the supply of money in the economy to influence interest rates and economic growth. For example, if the central bank believes that inflation is rising too quickly, it may raise interest rates to make borrowing more expensive, which can slow down economic growth and reduce demand for goods and services. On the other hand, if the economy is struggling and inflation is too low, the central bank may lower interest rates to encourage borrowing and investment. Another way to prevent inflation is through fiscal policy, where the government manages its spending and taxation to influence the economy. For example, if the government believes that demand is too high and is causing inflation, it may reduce its spending or increase taxes to decrease demand and cool down the economy. In addition to these macroeconomic policies, there are also measures that individuals and businesses can take to protect themselves against inflation. For example, people can invest in assets that are expected to maintain or increase in value over time, such as stocks, bonds, or real estate. Furthermore, individuals can also try to negotiate higher salaries or wages to keep up with the rising cost of living, or they can look for ways to increase their productivity and efficiency to maintain their purchasing power. 
Overall, preventing inflation requires a combination of efforts from both the public and private sectors, as well as individual actions. By carefully managing the money supply, interest rates, and government spending, we can help to maintain price stability and protect the value of our savings. Okay, uh, now I will ask another question, uh, which a lot of people can use. Write me a detailed terms of use agreement that will protect me from all kinds of problems in uh, website services area. I wonder, okay, we got a session expired. Okay, I have reshit the session and we continue. Okay, so it is writing us a terms of use agreement uh, that will protect us from all kind of problems. But if that is um, technically correct or not, I'm not sure. But it should give us a lot of idea and probably protection. Okay. Terms of use agreement. Welcome to our website. By accessing or using our website, you agree to be bound by the terms and conditions set forth in this terms of use agreement, the agreement. Please read this agreement carefully before accessing or using our website. If you do not agree to all of the terms and conditions of this agreement, you may not access or use our website. Our website. Our website is a platform that provides information, resources, and services to our users. We may change, add, or remove any part of our website at any time, without notice. Your use of our website. You may use our website only for lawful purposes and in accordance with this agreement. You agree not to use our website. In any way that violates any applicable federal, state, local, or international law or regulation. For the purpose of exploiting, harming, or attempting to exploit or harm minors in any way by exposing them to inappropriate content, or otherwise. To transmit, or procure the sending of, any advertising or promotional material, including any junk mail, chain letter, spam, or any other similar solicitation. To impersonate or attempt to impersonate any person or entity, including us or any of our employees or representatives. User content. Our website may allow you to post, upload, or otherwise submit content, including but not limited to text, images, videos, and audio files, user content. You are solely responsible for any user content that you submit, post, or upload to our website. By submitting, posting, or uploading user content to our website, you grant us a perpetual, irrevocable, non-exclusive, royalty-free, worldwide license to use, reproduce, modify, adapt, publish, translate, create derivative works from, distribute, and display your user content in any media. Third-party links. Our website may contain links to third-party websites or services that are not owned or controlled by us. We have no control over, and assume no responsibility for, the content, privacy policies, or practices of any third-party websites or services. If you access a third-party website from our website, you do so at your own risk, and you agree that we will have no liability arising from your use of or access to any third-party website or service. Intellectual property. Our website and its entire contents, features, and functionality, including but not limited to all information, software, text, displays, images, video, and audio, and the design, selection, and arrangement thereof, are owned by us, our licensors, or other providers of such material and are protected by United States and international copyright, trademark, patent, trade secret, and other intellectual property or proprietary rights laws. Disclaimer of warranties. Our website is provided as is and as available without any representation or warranty, whether express, implied, or statutory. We specifically disclaim any implied warranties of title, merchantability, fitness for a particular purpose, and non-infringement. We do not guarantee that our website will be secure or free from bugs, viruses, or other harmful components. Limitation of liability. In no event will we be liable for any indirect, incidental, special, consequential, or punitive damages, or any loss of profits or revenues, whether incurred directly or indirectly, or any loss of data, use, goodwill, or other intangible losses, resulting from your access to or use of our website. Indemnification. You agree to defend, indemnify, and hold us harmless, including our affiliates. Oh, wow, this is awesome. Uh, a user agreement. Probably, if uh, this wasn't limited with uh, like 500 tokens, we would get a full length of terms of use agreement that could protect us from all kind of uh, events and cases. Okay, and here our last uh, question. Compose a ballad about SEO auditory from Assassin's Creed. Did we ask it this previously? 
Okay. Yeah, we had asked this previously. Okay, now time to move uh, and learn with what is about head open AI. Okay. Um, so you see there is a reset thread button, dark mode, open AI Discord, and learn more. Let's click learn more and let's read what is chat GPT. Okay. ChatGPT, optimizing language models for dialogue. We've trained a model called ChatGPT which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests. ChatGPT is a sibling model to instruct GPT, which is trained to follow an instruction in a prompt and provide a detailed response. The th okay, um, let's see what other things there are so you see there are also other questions like this code is not working like i expect how do i fix it and it could provide you an answer so let's uh, read the methods that they have used it. methods we trained this model using reinforcement learning from human feedback rlhf using the same methods as instruct gpt but with slight differences in the data collection setup we trained an initial model using supervised fine tuning Human AI trainers provided conversations in which they played both sides, the user and an AI assistant. We gave the trainers access to model written suggestions to help them compose their responses. To create a reward model for reinforcement learning, we needed to collect comparison data, which consisted of two or more model responses ranked by quality. To collect this data, we took conversations that AI trainers had with the chatbot. We randomly selected a model written message, sampled several alternative completions, and had AI trainers rank them. Using these reward models, we can fine-tune the model using proximal policy optimization. We performed several iterations of this process. Okay, and uh, let's see more. ChatGPT is fine-tuned from a model in the GPT 3.5 series, which finished training in early 2022. You can learn more about the 3.5 series here. ChatGPT and GPT 3.5 were trained on an Azure AI supercomputing infrastructure. Limitations. ChatGPT sometimes writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers. Fixing this issue is challenging, as, 1, during RL training, there's currently no source of truth, 2, training the model to be more cautious causes it to decline questions that it can answer correctly, and, 3, supervised training misleads the model because the ideal answer depends on what the model knows, rather than what the human demonstrator knows. ChatGPT is sensitive to tweaks to the input phrasing or attempting the same prompt multiple times. For example, given one phrasing of a question, the model can claim to not know the answer, but given a slight rephrase, can answer correctly. The model is often excessively verbose and overuses certain phrases, such as restating that it's a language model trained by OpenAI. These issues arise from biases in the training data, trainers prefer longer answers that look more comprehensive, and well-known over-optimization issues.12. Ideally, the model would ask clarifying questions when the user provided an ambiguous query. Instead, our current models usually guess what the user intended. While we've made efforts to make the model refuse inappropriate requests, it will sometimes respond to harmful instructions or exhibit biased behavior. We're using the moderation API to warn or block certain types of unsafe content, but we expect it to have some false negatives and positives for now. We're eager to collect user feedback to aid our ongoing work to improve this system. Iterative Deployment Today's research release of ChatGPT is the latest step in OpenAI's iterative deployment of increasingly safe and useful AI systems. Many lessons from deployment of earlier models like GPT-3 and Codex have informed the safety mitigations in place for this release, including substantial reductions in harmful and untruthful outputs achieved by the use of reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF. Well, to summarize, um, ChatGPT is um, shockingly good, if you ask me. And they have developed this model within a such short time. Um, so in future it is probable that um, it is probable that uh, the ai will take a uh, job of a lot of professions and a lot of people will become jobless unfortunately uh, there will be a transition period where uh, a lot, when a lot of job uh, jobs will be get eradicated by the AI and a lot of jobless uh, people there will be however in far future I believe that none of the humans 
will be in need to work okay uh, so all of the work will be done by machines and humans will just leave uh, only Allah knows best for sure but this is my estimation if the uh, world continue as it is uh, but chat GPT is surprisingly uh, good um, and it could be useful uh, and it can be used as expert system a supportive system in many of the professions um, so uh, this is all if you have enjoyed our video uh, please subscribe and like our video uh, open notifications <laughs> these are the classical um, let's say a classical refers of uh, content uh, generators and uh, we also have now a patreon page i hope that uh, you can join our patreon support us and help us to make uh, better videos uh, generate better content in future hopefully okay uh, as i said i will uh, generate video parts video sections of this video and uh, hopefully see you in the uh, next video.